you want to learn cybersecurity, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to learn some PowerShell. You're going to get a chance to see Tenable, which is the number one vulnerability scanning tool in the world. And we'll also get a chance to see Sentinel-1. We're going to be using the Sentinel-1, which is like the top five, maybe number three on the list. Uh, endpoint detection and response, XDR. You've heard those terminologies, perhaps. But anyway, top tool in the world. And you're going to get a chance to see them. And this is what they're not teaching you a lot of times in boot camps, which is what you need to actually be able to do the job that we're doing every day in the industry but before i go don't forget to check out cyvatar.ai c-y-v-a-t-a-r.ai they are the sponsor for this tenable tenant that we're using today so if you need full services if you work for a company and y'all not satisfied with your cybersecurity services or if you own your own company and you need cybersecurity services they can take care of one machine all the way up to thousands of machines and here's the thing they don't just respond after you're hacked we actually remediate the vulnerabilities and that doesn't mean just applying patches that means literally everything that's needed to remediate your vulnerability is very involved and that's why only a few companies in the world actually do attempt to remediate all of your vulnerabilities check out cybertar.ai so let's get started so we're in tenable here and so i'm going to go ahead and click on this number from the main dashboard and this allows me to basically be able to see all vulnerabilities i'll zoom in a little bit for you okay so you can see that so if I click on this 108, it takes me to a list of all the vulnerabilities and I'm going to be looking at criticals and I can show you how to filter, but we're going to stay on target today because I want you to look specifically, you know, we had this down, had this down to only like four, maybe three criticals. Now we're back up on the list. And the thing is, what's not here is the vulnerability that I've been working on, which is Internet Explorer unsupported version detection. So I'm going to show you how we can see this, how I know it was fixed, and then I'm going to show you the code that fixed it. That's why this is a part three of the series is because the first two times the fix that I implemented didn't work. And I'm OK with that because that's real life. OK, so you get a chance to see me take three shots in it and the third time was correct. So the thing is, I'm going to say for here, if you notice in my query it's saying and severity equals to let's see, modify. So and risk modify. OK, state is equal to this is what I want to modify. Because this is saying the state of the vulnerability, which is it has four states, active, resurfaced, and fixed. By default, it does not show you fixed vulnerabilities. It only shows you the vulnerabilities that have not been fixed so you can do something about them. So, But I'm going to say just show me the fixed vulnerabilities. Okay. And if I can shift my hand. Okay. And you notice on the when I type this on the left-hand side, it actually started giving me some options. So when I say state, I'll show you this too. So because I love this, the once again, it, the advanced menu, when you type a certain thing, so I already just have, I put equal to, and I can select fixed here and it'll let me say, and, and I can keep appending to the query, but this is what we end up with. And vulnerability uh, state is equal to fix. When I press the apply button, which is all the way over here, I need one of those like zoom things with my mouse. So this is going to show me all the vulnerabilities that have been fixed on these machines. OK, and so I'm looking for a specific vulnerability. So I know this one. This is it. Well, not Microsoft Office. This is Internet Explorer. So I'm going to use my query here to say and plug in name. And I'm going to say contains and we have it over here like you'll see it contains and I'll type uh, Internet explore i press enter here let's see if that works okay and it does it filters down to internet explorer unsupported version detection and this is the machine and so the thing is just want to make sure we go to the metrics here it was last seen on 521 which was yesterday at the time filming of this video so that means i implemented the fix yesterday it was scanned and the vulnerability now the thing is the machine was scanned again today but the vulnerability was last seen yesterday because that is when Tenable, the plugin, which is what Tenable uses to interrogate these vulnerabilities, was able to see that, hey, I'm checking the machine again. Oh, you have fulfilled the criteria necessary to remediate this vulnerability and it marks it as fixed. OK, and so that being the case, OK, so I can go in here. Now, the problem is I found with Tenable is once you actually fix the vulnerability, it takes your output and this is where you can see what basically we were fixing and you have to look at videos look at the previous two videos if you want to see all this information but it says no output because the vulnerability is fixed now and it's not seeing the condition that was there so you don't get the information but i know what happened so now let's go to sentinel one and let me show you how i actually fixed it i'm going to actually undo 
the fix for the vulnerability and I'm going to redo it with the correct one. So for those of you that have watched the first two videos, thank you so much. So what's the first thing I want to do? I'm going to type in this code live because I want it. I want the code to actually like fail sometimes. And you see me doing my troubleshooting because that is real life. I could do a super polished video, but the thing is that wouldn't necessarily work. So I'm going to say get item and it's HTTP local machine policies, Microsoft Internet Explorer main. Okay, so it did not like that. Okay, so I'm going to take off what I usually do when I do a query and see, I see my issue right there. Microsoft, there's not a T there. So I, there's my troubleshooting right there. So that's why they return and see the thing is it doesn't necessarily error out. It's not like you had a syntax error. You just referenced the path that wasn't there. And so somebody who's not taking the time to test yourself and say, okay, am I actually correct? Here's my information correct. So I always test for a known thing so that when I do get an error or I don't get some feet, some output or something, when I run a command, I know that, okay, well, I ran it here and I know that this is correct. Um, but when I don't get, when I get the error, I want to make sure that the error is truly saying that it's not there, not because I typed the path wrong, if that makes any sense. And so like for us, so what I would typically do is instead of going to main, I would just I'll go all the way up to this folder. Cause I was like, okay, the likelihood of me making a typo on this first part is probably less. And I would run the command here. Oh, the command works. And so then I would add the next folder because the vulnerability actually exists. And we'll see if we, okay, that's good. You can still see it. It's at the bottom now started for the bottom, but I'm here. Okay. So <clears throat> sorry about that. So you can see right here, this is, this is the path where we have to basically put a registry key into our machine. And I'll show you on my actual machine. This is what a registry key looks like. Okay. So we're doing this, but we're doing this with code. So in this location in the registry, you can kind of think of them like folders. They're represented as folders, but these are of course called registry keys. And we have to basically, when we're trying to remediate this vulnerability, the thing is this registry key exists, right? This folder exists. This one does not. And this one does not. So we actually have to use code to create these two. And then we have to add a, some properties, which is called a registry D word. We have to actually add this and then add a value of one to it. So that's what we're doing. So we literally could do this with clicks if we're on the machine. But a lot of times we're doing this remotely, so that's not going to be an option. But what I'm going to do first now is now that I've identified that exists, I'm going to take it away. So I'm going to use the get item command to check it. I'm going to use the remove item command to remove this registry key or folder. Now, keep in mind, I'm working remotely on a machine that's somewhere like 20, 15, 20 hours, 15, I think about 15 hours away, 13 hours away, something like that. I'm working on a machine here. I just showed you that window on my machine locally. So you would kind of see and understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So, but here's the deal. All right. So I'm going to use the remove item command and I'm going to tell it to remove all the way to the internet explorer main folder. And that's the equivalent of me telling it to remove this registry key right here. Okay. But why not just go ahead and since I'm going to have to do the run the command two times, why not just tell it to remove the Internet Explorer folder and the main folder would go with it. And we can use the force command to make it happen, because if I try to remove this folder using programming code or PowerShell, it's going to say, hey, there's a folder. There's another registry key in it. You have to remove this key first. Typically, that's what I recall. But I'm just going to say, hey, forget it. I'm going to save time here. I'm going to remove the internet explorer folder which means the main folder or a registry key in it is going to get removed okay so i need to stop saying folder so it's going to prompt me and i was like ah, i don't want to be prompted so i'm going to say no for a second and i'm going to run a command and i'm going to type force to see if i can get it to not prompt me okay it still prompts me and i'm going to say a and you see the menu options here yes to all and so i'll just type a lowercase a even though it says uppercase now i'm going to run the same command the get item command to check to see if this exists and I get this is so this is a now I'm using a command that I know work that I know doesn't have to have a syntax error and it's saying hey the in the, the register key Internet Explorer main register key does not exist anymore I'm gonna say okay cool well, what about the Internet Explorer maybe just delete it main oh the Internet Explorer register key is gone so oh, it looks like my command did delete both register keys register keys what about the Microsoft oh it's still there so that's the equivalent of me basically in the registry 
having deleted these two registry keys with one command. Okay. Feel free to go through this video and learn this. You need to learn this. Okay. Cause registry manipulation is a big part of vulnerability remediation. So now that I've, I've got us back to square one, how do we add the registry key in? Well, it's a very simple command. The first thing is I need to add the keys and then I need to add the actual value to the registry key. So once again, what I'm going to do in one command is I'm going to actually add this Internet Explorer and this main registry key back to the registry by using this command. OK, and let me kind of dissect this. So new item and basically the path HP local machine software policies, Microsoft Internet Explorer main. Now, if I leave off the tech force command, this shouldn't work. OK, because it doesn't exist, right? Because it's saying basically the Internet Explorer registry key doesn't exist. So how can I add the main key to it when the one that I'm trying to add it, the, the key, the registry key that main is a part of doesn't exist. Think about hierarchy. So basically saying, hey, buddy, I can't add this main registry key because this key does not exist. We can get around that by using the actual force command. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do here. Same command, new item, I'm going to type tag force and I'm going to press enter. And it boom, it comes up. It does not give an error message and it shows the main folder exists. So now when I run the get um, get item command, which is going to basically pull this and verify that this registry key exists, it now shows that the Internet Explorer registry key exists. OK, well, let's see if the main and I can type main and hit the tab key. And if it's there, it will actually populate. So that's a cool thing that you can do is if you're trying to navigate through the registry, if you just type a few letters of the registry key that's next in line, it will actually type it out for you. And there's the main registry key. OK, so cool. So now I need to add values to it. You notice the main doesn't show anything. It doesn't show there's anything, any properties in that registry key. And so in order to do that, I want to use this command, the new item property. So I did the new item command first and I'll bring it up to create the registry keys. Once again, these are the registry keys. They look like folders, but we're in the registry editor with the which the registry is a place where Windows settings are housed. Most or all of the well, most of the Windows settings are housed in the registry configuration, everything. It's like a great place uh, to learn and be become aware. So but this command is new item and I'm going to tell it the path. Basically, the registry key that I just created. OK, so no, actually, that's not it. Let's go to our new command. Let's right click. And in the Sentinel one console, you have to do a right click and paste. And so here's the new command, new item property. Remember, we just did a new item to create the keys. Now we want to add a property to those registry keys. So new item property, HG local machine software policies, Microsoft Internet Explorer main. And then we're going to say the name of the property that we want to add is going to be. And I see I got I got two spaces there. I say I like I like to fix my stuff right there. OK, so that should only be one space. It don't matter. It'll still run, but I just like to fix my code. So anyway, so name notify disable IE options. OK. And so remember, this is what just to kind of verbally sh or kind of visually show you what we're adding. So to this key, we're actually adding this uh, property, this registry was called D word. This is the type that we're adding. So we're adding a registry D word and we're assigning it a value of one. So this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like code tack name and attack is the same as a minus key. So you hear me say that in all my videos tack name equals notify disable IE options that matches what I just showed you. Tag property is D word that matches what I just showed you. Okay, remember, don't forget right here, type D word. Okay, that's the, the name, the D word, and the value is one. And I know it says 0010x, so it's represented in hexadecimal format. If we put it in decimal format, it's just one. Okay, so don't be intimidated. So, anyway, that's all that means. And so we're saying value, which kind of runs off the screen a little bit, equals to one. And when I press enter, you notice you get this notified to save options one. It puts that and it'll tell you this path information. Though, hey, I'm not going to pretend everything. I don't know why it does this. So somebody smarter than me probably knows why it does all this when I create a registry key. But I will tell you when I run the get item command now. Guess what I see? It doesn't just show main. It shows main with the property of notified disable IE option. And I can go ahead and if I needed to, I can add other properties to it. And this actually is what remediated the vulnerability and completed it. So 
If this video was helpful, please don't forget to drop a like on the video. I'm trying to give you real world information, real stuff that we're doing in the job in cybersecurity when it comes to vulnerability remediation so that you might get a full understanding of exactly what you are going to be doing and what actually keeps companies safe. So don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching. And oh, if you watch to the end of this video, notify disable IE options in chat. If you watch to the end of the video, see ya.